Identity politics. Well, it's not really politics, but let's go with that term. What happens when you identify as whatever you feel like? What kind of a slope is that? Well, it's a slippery one, and especially when you're not wearing proper shoes. Um, today, we are in an environment where whatever you feel like that day, you can identify as. You get up, and some for some reason, you know what? I don't feel very manly today. I'm going to be identify as a woman, or your woman identifying as a man. What happens, though, when this whole identity thing goes too far? Are we in a position now in society where this identity idea is going to become the catalyst for the defense of pedophilia? A bit of a stretch? Not really, when you know there are known cases where this has been used. Now, we all know about the idea of precedence. Here we are. We're in it. In 2018, there was a man by the name of Joseph Roman. Joseph Roman was identifying himself as a nine-year-old girl. Now, mind you, Joseph had a history of pedophilic behavior, abusing children as well. But he was married and he decided, I'm going to move on from that. Had kids too, by the way. And he wanted to identify as a nine-year-old girl. Wants a crib, wants a new family, wants a mommy and a daddy. Binky and all. In a dress, wants to live at home in order to be more comfortable around children because he said this was his identity fast forward to 2022 another individual comes forward with the same story his name joseph gobrick he said he identified as an eight-year-old girl i have always been an eight-year-old girl and even my drawings and fantasies i am always an eight-year-old girl he was arrested for having images on his computer and distributing them, even participating in online forums as an eight-year-old girl, because he said, I can have these images because I myself identify as a child. We want to warn you about the mature content in this next story. A Grand Rapids man with a history of sex crimes is back in prison for what was found on his home computer. 45-year-old Joseph Gobrick says the images police found were not child pornography. He says they were protected by his First Amendment right to free speech. Now, normally, normally, that would seem, man, you crazy. You're obviously an adult. But in today's society, where you are allowed to explore what you feel you are, are we about to break new ground where people can come forward and say, I identify as something and have it be accepted by society and out goes the stigma of pedophilia. What happens when you have allowed a society to become so degraded that any and everyone can just pick a feeling and run with it as a factual thing? We're there. People may not think that, oh, we're, you know, we're almost we're pretty far away. We still function as a great place. No, we're not. How many of you remember a TED talk some years ago? I think it might be 10, 12 years ago now. Where this lady was talking about being able to work through this idea of offenders versus non-offenders. And we thought back then that was crazy. Of course, even if you have the inclination to it, it's still illegal. That's a mental problem. There will be someone in your environment, someone you know, maybe even your husband or son, who is struggling with these sort of feelings. These people can't talk about their feelings because they know that they will be hated for it. I truly do believe that every person is longing for love at some point in their life. The medical field said, no, no, there is a marked difference. It's not a mental disorder, just a preference. What happens when society decides that this is no longer illegal? And not only no longer illegal, but so legal that you cannot file a complaint if a man or a woman decides to take your child and have his or her way with them. Where are you going to stand in defense? You can't because there's no longer any laws protecting your child. You remember when some time ago, Mr. Epstein got arrested? Do you realize how much of society they were hating on him for what he did? Yes. But the people in power didn't hate him so much as to divulge names. You didn't find that a little bit odd? That they didn't hate the act so much that they wanted it ended. The island is still there. There are still multiple locations where people have not been spoken about, so the activity can still go on. 
This is an ongoing problem and it's becoming normalized through various means. Now, they're not going to come out directly and tell you, today we're signing a bill where pedophilia is now okay. You see, most people won't take it that way and the devil doesn't work like that. He's not going to be blatant like that. He's going to work secretively, smoothly, quietly, underhandedly. What's the best way to do it? Well, twofold. You introduce the idea that one gender is fluid. The instance that you say gender is fluid, you can introduce a whole gamut of crossover. I am no longer man, I'm woman, I'm no longer woman, I'm man. Now, what happens when you introduce a whole nother dynamic into this identity idea? I don't think I'm an adult. I think I'm a child. At first, you insane, that's too far. Is it though, today? Is it really that far? How, how about the images of people who are trying to stay young? Not a stretch. Listen to why I'm saying it's not a stretch. This whole idea of youth and staying young has become something of a unicorn to chase. Everybody wants to look younger. Why? Well, they say, well, because the fountain of youth and being able to do what you want, prolong your days. Is that really why they started this idea? Or is it to normalize the idea of regressing in age? What happens when you regress to ages and then all of a sudden decide to say, well, I want to go even younger. Nothing wrong with that. Why? You're just trying to live longer, right? Yes. In walks the one person with a deviant tendency towards children. Now they're telling you, hey, you know what? I identify as a so-and-so child at this and this age, this and this sex. All of a sudden now the tables are a little bit different because you've accepted that ideology. You've accepted that switch. Now, what happens when that individual who identifies as a child becomes attracted to an actual child? You know what's going to happen? It's going to be accepted. It's going to be normal. It's going to be something that you're going to get very much love with. You're going to like the idea. It's going to be great. Why? The person is just exploring who they are. You can't be judging anyone for who they feel they are. Multiple people have come forward saying this is something we should accept. This is not something that is far-fetched. You can't tell me that it's not happening. It is rampant right now. We thought this was going to be crazy. Back 30 years ago, someone stepping forward saying that they felt like a female. Fast forward 10 years, it becomes something of a, well, you know, it could be true. And then you see Hollywood start accepting it by the cross-dressing, making it normal. Then before too long, trans movement. Okay, wow, okay, that was a quick, quick turnaround. Yeah, it was, but it happened. The next step, because the maps have already been introduced, right? You remember this whole idea of don't call them pedophiles, call them maps. They have already started the mental transition because now you don't want to call them that. You call them maps. They're maps. They're just minor attracted persons. Corey used to say it was the boiling frog effect. This is what the boiling frog effect looks like in real life. You adjust a certain thing just ever so slightly and society becomes normalized with it. It's good. It's okay. It's just one or two people. Just don't try and rob them of their joy. Turn up the heat a little more. Look, maybe we should become more accepting of people. And it's just a preference. He's not acting out. Boiling a little bit more. What if it's just one event and he's with that person permanently? It's okay. Boil a little more. And before too long, it is no longer illegal to mess with children. This is not far-fetched. This is not something that you say, well, that would never happen. You already see. We thought, we thought, we genuinely thought that this particular way that we're in life right now would never be normal. How many of you thought today you would be able to turn on the TV and watch a parade with naked people walking down the street in front of children? How many of you thought we would have gotten there? You, you predicted that? Did you predict that they would invite these people into a classroom of kids? Did you ever predict that one? Did you ever predict that they would be indoctrinating children to accept it. Did you think we'd get there? No. And we got there because we thought it would never get there. 
And we sat back and think it would never happen. Don't worry. I'm not worried. I'm not worried about that. It would never happen. It will never get there. Lo and behold, we're there. Right now, we're there. The next step is to transition the mind from it being not accepted to being fully okay. And the premise they're going to put it as is just how I feel I am. And so I'm going to identify as this. And as long as I identify with this and you have no right to deny my identity, I also have the right to find love in the location of which I have identified as. We are there, folks. We are there. And they're everywhere. There is no coincidence that these people are going after conversations with children about this. Because eventually what their hope is, the next generation of those children are going to be the ones to normalize it because they've been told it's okay. That's what's going to happen. We allowed it, though. But we can also stop it. And it is up to us to stop it. You're going to see more and more cases where men and women come forward identifying as something after they committed a crime against a child. And before too long, the judge is going to say, well, you know what? I can't really, in all good conscience, give you a, a sentence because this is just who you are. What we can do is accommodate you. And how are they going to accommodate you? This is how. We spoke before about this lady that brought some legislation forward. She was, a, I think, a, a local congresswoman. And she said, because there was not a whole lot of research done on pedophilia, we should do some, but with the mindset that we can possibly let them be who they are with the aid of dolls. Remember that one? Too far, right? Too far-fetched? Impossible? Yeah, I can see what you mean. It is only a matter of time unless we put our foot down. If you think Jeffrey Epstein's list missing and no one getting fined is a problem, it's not just a problem. They're telling you something. What are they telling you? We can do what we want and eventually we will get our way. Nothing you can do about it. We're never going to give you that list. Well, we're here now. This is where we are. It is up to us to fight this with all we have. Because the next level that's coming is going to be the attack on our offspring. I don't want my child looking back and saying, Dad, why didn't you at least do something about what was coming? Why didn't you say something? Fight for me, something. I'm not, I don't want to hear that out of my child's mouth. I want to be able to say, son, daughter, I did all that I possibly could with what resources I have and what influence I was given. Just know I will never, ever, ever abandon this. We are warning people right now, it is going to become normal unless we stand up. And if you don't, I can only count you as the ones that want it to be normalized. And if you want it to be normalized, you must be wanting to participate as well. I have one serious line for you and my final statement to you over our dead bodies. <laughs>